Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these little guys right here. These are the Urban Survival Gear Thai Scribe Bolt Action Pen. Um, this is actually two different generations. This is the first generation, which actually launched by a Kickstarter. It was very quick, by the way, and nicely handled overall. Um, but this is the first generation, and then this one down here is the second generation. Um, first off, let's do a little size comparison. Uh, let's see here. Here is a um, big click stick sort of pen. Uh, so you can see it's a full size pen, uh, 100%. Uh, here it is against the Prometheus Alpha. Another the pen that can take the Mont Blanc refills here. Um, right here against your Pilot G2, which is the uh, default cartridge that this guy comes with, by the way. And uh, here is a long international uh, fountain pen cartridge, if that helps you out a little bit. And here it is against the Thai Scribe Pencil, uh, which is obviously the same size, but is a mechanical pencil version of this that I'm going to be reviewing in a separate video. Um, but anyways, uh, there you go. Then a note on the company. This is Urban Survival Gear. See the little logo is right up here. And uh, USG is is, as far as I can tell, just one guy, a guy named Kelvin. Nice guy. He posts regularly on Instagram, and uh, everything's made in the USA by him, and so that's a beautiful thing. So, um, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your Thai Scribe Bolt here. On the good side, first off, these are very durable pens. Um, there's not much to them. I mean, there are a few moving parts. If I take this guy apart, what you can see here is that there's the cap, there is a spring, which is not captive. Um, there is the refill, and then everything else is just captive. There's this little titanium piece that slides inside this little area, but that's that's really it. The only moving part in this guy is this, and then the refill inside the pen, uh, which is nice. And considering that this is just a solid chunk of titanium otherwise, can't argue with the durability of it one bit. So I like that very, very much. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, this is a great pen. I love writing with it. Um, and that's for a few reasons. The balance of it is just great. Um, it, it feels absolutely great in the hand. The size of it is just where I want it to be. These little grooves feel really, really nice, um, even more so on the new version relative to the old version here. Um, and it's it's just, it works well. And it's also very lefty friendly. A lot of bolt action pens, unfortunately, have something else. They've got the clip and then a separate bolt gate here, which means that there's a lot of stuff sticking off of the side of the pen. But in this guy, because there's only one thing sticking off the pen, and that is the clip, which also happens to be the bolt, um, it is very nice to write with. You can have it in any rotation or any position, and it works well for lefties as well, because you don't have that bolt trying to stick into your hand down on the bottom there. So I like very much that this is an ambidextrous pen, and that it's it's very nicely done for the hand. It writes nicely. Um, speaking of the writing process, it is, uh, it's got lots of refill options. It comes with a uh, Pilot G2, just sort of boring uh, gel cartridge thing. But it also, uh, you can also get it with a Pilot V5, I'm sorry, you can use a Pilot V5, a Pentel Enagel, Uniball 207, Uniball Jetstream, a Schmidt, any of those. Uh, I'm using actually a Mont Blanc cartridge, uh, which works best, by the way, if you trim the very top of it down just very slightly. Um, you know, I remove just a little bit from this top part, and then it works just beautifully. And I love this refill here, by the way, the Mont Blanc Rollerball. And you can also buy an adapter, a $15 little conversion kit that lets Parker refills and space pen refills fit in here just fine, which is great. Um, so I appreciate that versatility, and particularly the fact that this can use those Mont Blancs make it a great writer, which is spectacular. He also gives you a bunch of options. Um, you can get this in titanium, copper, or brass uh, with different price points at each, and th then that's wonderful. I appreciate that he gives you that choice, and the copper one is very, very attractive. I might pick one of those up down the road. The simplicity of the design is very nice. Actually, we'll talk about that later. Save that for the great. Um, the logo on this, it's a nice logo, and you can see here they They've done it on the clip on this particular one in the second gen with a blank cap. And then uh, for the first generation, the logo is up here on the top. Actually, I think I kind of slightly prefer it on the clip there. Um, it's a little more subtle, but uh, look, the nice logo, no complaints there. The finish on this new one is actually rather nice. Um, it's sort of a dark stone wash thing, maybe, or uh, there could be blasting involved. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's nice, and it seems to show scratches a little less readily than the first generation. And then finally, I have to say that Kelvin and uh, the Urban Survival Gear are showing incredible trajectory. I had a fountain pen that really just wasn't all that impressive. And then, then I got the first one, which is a very nice pen, but had some serious machining issues. It wasn't quite up to snuff. And then this guy is perfect. So the fact that he's just growing in leaps and freaking bounds is wonderful. That's something I love to see. New craftsmen who are really doing a great job of learning and improving their craft. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so um, to me, all of that is the good, is that there's an incredible trajectory there over at USG. The uh, finish on the second gen is very nice. The logo is nice. It's a simple little design. It's got lots of good options, titanium, copper, brass, lots of refills. It's ergonomically friendly, good ergonomics overall. It writes very nicely, and uh, it's durable with relatively few moving parts. 
To me, what is great about this pen, 100%, is that this is the best bolt-action pen ever. Now, I have reviewed a number of bolt-action pens on the channel. The uh, Tactile Turn, Glider, or Slider, one of them. Uh, the uh, Max Madco bolt-action, Fellholt, the Tie Bolt, all of those things. Um, but the thing is, this is the best design for it, in my personal estimation. Because there is only one thing on the barrel sticking out. I already hit on that ergonomically, being a beautiful thing. But it also means that it is a very easy thing to hit. You will always, if you're just running your thumb across this, you will always run into the clip. And because the clip is very big, there's not a whole lot of fine motor control involved in doing this. All you do is just kind of shove your finger at the pen and it'll disengage. You shove your finger at the pen and it'll engage. It's very, very nice and it's very intuitive to use. Um, I feel like I can have this out of my pocket and, you know, engaged in an instant, uh, even just using my thumb without any concern, whereas some other bolt-action pens have felt a little bit more fiddly, like it's easy to slip off of there. Add to it the lefty friendliness of it, and this is just a great mechanism. As far as I'm concerned, this is the way to do a bolt-action pen. With this clip equals bolt thing, it's a brilliant idea, and it's executed wonderfully here. So, um, to me at least, that's what's great, is that I like bolt-action pens, and this is the best bolt-action pen that has ever come across my desk, bar none, in terms of functionality and design. Um, let's talk about the bad here. And the bad to me is that uh, Urban Survival Gear is a super generic name. Honestly, when I first saw that, like, this is not like survival gear. This is, it's just kind of a weird name. It makes it sound like they should be selling stuff like the Z, the Z Hunter over here, rather than selling very nice bolt action pens. I don't know that that's going to age super well. That's completely a nitpick, though, um, beside the point. Next thing, this could be maybe a little bit shorter. I'd like to see, for instance, some of this top part cut off, or maybe, I, I don't know, if they can remove anything. This just feels a little bit on the long side. It's not all that crazy long, but think about it in terms of, compared to your big click stick here, you've got a little bit of extra on the top, and it's completely non-flexible. So if you've got relatively short pockets, this is a pretty long pen. Next thing, the spring in here is non-captive. It's not a big deal, but if you are a compulsive pen disassembler, you are more likely to have a spring flying across the room that way, and without the spring, this is not going to work whatsoever. And, um... The, uh, I, I, I do have to say, the Kickstarter pen was really not well done all that well. I mean, it was okay, but still, um, there was a really nasty break into it with a lot of grittiness and ugly in there. The screws were actually of two different sizes, which was really, really strange. The finish isn't all that great. You can see it's showing all kinds of wear for just from everyday carry. Um, the threading on it was super unsatisfying. This little washer just didn't fit in place. I mean, this new version is just miles ahead of the Kickstarter version. It is clear that he has got a major improvement on his hands, and I very, very much improved that. But the thing is, this first version wasn't all that impressive in terms of machining. And really, I'm glad I stuck around for the second one to see that learning go on. Um, but, you know, still fine functionally, but as a connoisseur of high-end machining, he's definitely doing better here. There are still a couple of tiny little issues here beyond that. Um, one of them is the fact that this little J-gate here, this little chunk right on the corner there, is a little bit on the sharp side. It's very easy to snag your finger on there. I'd like to see that chamfered in some way, or, or I, there's gotta be a way to do that a little bit differently, such that that's a little less snaggy and a little less pokey for you. And then the other thing is that the top of the clip here, although there is some rounding on it, is still a little bit sharp. I'd almost like to see that rounded a little bit more, because I think it would make the whole thing just a little bit more, uh, I don't know, a little more comfortable to use and actuate. So um, there you go, that's the bad, is that it's got a, a little bit of a sharp top on the clip here, and considering you're using that for the bolt action, it's not ideal. The J-Gate has a little bit of sharpness still on the inside here. The uh, Kickstarter pen honestly just wasn't as well done. Um, in terms of machining quality, this is miles ahead, but this was a little bit disappointing, although still functionally fine. Um, it has a non-captive spring in there. It could be a little bit shorter, and the name Urban Survival Gear just doesn't seem to fit the products that well, but whatever. In terms of ugly, this guy had some ugly. This one really doesn't. That's a huge improvement, and I love being able to say that. So the latest generation of these guys just don't have any ugly. So let's go into the final conclusion. And my final conclusion is that I freaking love this pen. Look, even with the machining issues in the first one, I freaking loved this pen. But the fact that I, I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try it again and go with the second generation, I'm super glad that I did. Because the, the improvement in terms of machining quality makes even more apparent just how damn good this pen is. The first one was great. The second one shows mastery. And the fact that you can get now this really great design that is absolutely wonderful for writing, that's wonderful for carry, that just has an incredible action and fidget factor of 5,000, um, it's just, it's great. And I love seeing the progress that's going on here. 
But mostly my conclusion is that this is just the best bolt action pen on the market right now. I mean, seriously, 100%, absolutely a shining freaking gem. This is a brilliant idea. I love seeing it done, and I love seeing it being done well here. And at this point, in terms of shirt pocket pens, the ones that I would actually clip to something rather than just tossing in my pocket, this is probably my favorite pen I own at this point. Combined with the, 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 the Mont Blanc roller balls, this is absolutely awesome. And so, there you go. It's the final conclusion. If you want a bolt-action pen, then I think you should absolutely buy one of these. It's pricey, 80 bucks, but by God, it's really well done, and it's just such a great idea. So, Kelvin, great freaking job, and I love seeing the amount of learning and the effort here going in. Everybody else, if you're thinking about it, just go on ahead and do it, because I think it will absolutely help you survive whatever part of your urban existence really needs a great bolt-action pen. Hope this has been interesting. Have yourselves a good one, that I made the right call. Bye now. Time to bolt. Huh?